Today we have quite an extraordinary looking integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the cosine of 2x times the sine of x plus sine 2x divided by sine x. And the numerator is quite similar to an antiderivative I evaluated a while back. It was from the 2023 MIT Integration B semifinals. So you just take that, you divide it by sine x and integrate from 0 to pi by 2 and you get a surprisingly beautiful result which you'll find out by the end of the video. So for reference purposes we're going to call our integral here i and as my good friend man stuck in a box often says whenever I see exponentials and tricky functions together my brain goes Euler's formula and yes Euler's beautiful formula is the way forward. Uh, we know that e to the i times some real number phi equals the cosine of phi plus i times the sine of phi, meaning that the sine part is the imaginary part of the complex exponential. So that means the sine of x plus sine 2x, this too is the imaginary part of a complex exponential, which is e to the i times this very argument. It's x plus sine 2x. So this implies that we can write our integral i as the integral from 0 to pi by 2, the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2, that is, of e to the cosine of 2x times e to the i times x plus sine 2x divided by sine x dx. Okay, cool. And I can write this second exponential here as the product of two exponential functions. So let me just write that out as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the cosine of 2x times e to the ix times e to the i times sine 2x. And we can combine these two exponentials here using the rules of exponential function multiplication. So we have e to the cosine 2x plus i times sine 2x. And don't forget the e to the ix term here as well. And once again, we have a form of Euler's formula. So we can write this as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the e to the 2ix times e to the ix divided by sine x dx. What makes matters complicated for us is definitely this exponential raised to the complex exponential. But thankfully there's a nice way to work around it because the exponential function e to the z has a pretty cool infinite series expansion. That is the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. So all we need to do here is replace z by e to the 2ix and we're home free. So this implies that we can write i as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the ix divided by sine x times the sum over the non-negative integers k and replacing z by e, uh, e to the 2ix, this term here, we have e to the 2ikx divided by k factorial and we're integrating with respect to x of course. And notice that this e to the ix divided by sine x term is independent of the k variable with respect to which we're performing the summation. So we can just slip them inside this summation operator and write this as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the sum over k of 1 by k factorial times e to the 2ikx times e to the ix. And once again, we can combine them using the rules for exponential multiplication. And notice that we can factor out an ix term here. So we have ix factored out and we're left with 2k plus 1 being multiplied by it. And we're dividing all of this by sine x. And the golden question here is whether or not we can switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators. Well, the complex exponential is a bounded function and the reciprocal of sine x, that is the cosecant of x, is a decreasing function on the interval from 0 to pi by 2. So using Fubini's theorem, yes indeed, we can perform the switch up and we can now write this as the 
uh, sorry about that, imaginary part of the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the i x times 2k plus 1. I'm oh, terribly sorry once again. Divided by sine x integration with respect to x. And notice this 1 by k factorial term is independent of the x variable. So I can write it outside the integration operator. Now let's make use of the linearity of all three operators here. I'm talking about the integration, summation, and imaginary part operators. So using all of this linearity, we can take the imaginary part operator over here. And this implies that i equals the sum over the uh, non-negative integers k of 1 by k factorial times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the imaginary part of the complex exponential is the sine term. So you have sine 2k plus 1 x divided by sine x, and we're integrating with respect to x. Now, this term here may seem troublesome, but it's actually pretty easy to deal with. Why? Because this very structure is something called the Dirichlet kernel. And there's a nice article on, on Wikipedia explaining it, so do check that out if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Dirichlet kernel. There's a proof over there as well. So you can write this thing here as 1 plus the sum from n equals 1 to k of the cosine of 2nx, and we're integrating this from 0 to pi by 2 with respect to x, and we're summing over k as well, while multiplying by 1 by k factorial. Let's not forget that bit. So the integration here is pretty straightforward. That means on integration, we get the sum over k of 1 by k factorial times x plus the sum from n equals 1 to k of sine 2nx divided by 2n, and the limits are 0 and pi by 2. Now, in the limit as x approaches pi by 2, you get a pi by 2 over here, and you get sine 2n times pi by 2, which is, of course, equal to sine of n times pi, where n is a positive integer, so the sine terms all go to 0, and in the limit as x approaches 0, again, x goes to 0, and the sine terms again collapse to 0. So this thing just vanishes to 0, and you're left with pi by 2 times 1 by k factorial. Now pi by 2 is just a constant, so you can write this outside the summation operator, and we have the sum over k of 1 by k factorial. And once again, recall the the uh, exponential function. The exponential function e to the z equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. That means if z equals 1, then we have e equal to the sum over k of 1 by k, fac uh, 1 by k factorial. So this implies that i has a pretty nice result. It's 1 half of pi times z. E. And you can make a slight improvement on this by recalling the structure of the integral. You are integrating between 0 and pi by 2 e to the cosine of 2x times the sine of x plus sine 2x divided by the sine of x dx. Now, what if I replace x by negative x? So the cosine function is an even function, so it stays as it is. And the sine function is an odd function, so there's a negative sign in the denominator. x is a negative function, and so is the sine function. You can factor out the negative 1, and again, because sine is an, uh, an odd function, because the sine function is an odd function, uh, we can take out the negative sign, and the negative ones cancel out pretty nicely meaning that you're integrating an even function of x. That means the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 is exactly twice this result, which is the beautiful result of the product of our two favorite transcendentals, pi and e. And this was awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.